and the one with the rifle gets killed. The one who is coloring makes up the rifle and shoots. Welcome to the 20th episode of the Pick Up the Rifle and Shoot series, featuring my M16 A1 AR-15 clone. You know that saying that timing is everything? Well that couldn't be truer with this episode. With my last video on my M16 A2, it made sense an A1 would be next. I already had a Colt A1 upper and SP1 lower parts with no A1 lower to build them on, and dreaded the fact of using an A2 lower. But praise be to Mike of H&R, formerly of Nodax Bud, New production in Harrington and Richardson A1 strip lowers was in full swing, and after striking out on their initial releases, the third time was a charm, and I was able to finally secure an M16A1 strip lower. So here she is, my M16A1 AR-15 clone. What can I say about the M16A1's history It hasn't already been said? From its contentious upbringing to become the US's main service rifle in the Vietnam War, to eventually becoming today's most prolific weapons platform in the world. The A1 was an accumulation of numerous improvements from early variations, bred from the trials by fire, and would be redeemed to become in my opinion the most dominant rifle in the Vietnam War. And those vibes, they just don't go away. They used to get stronger and stronger, then all of a sudden, they just intensify. <laughs> Now, I'll go over in more detail, but first, let's make sure she's all clear. First up is the complete Colt E-type buttstock with buffer, buffer tube, and spring. Part of a Colt SP-1 lower parts kit set that I acquired. Here you can see the addition of the trap door for a cleaning kit and fixed rear sling swivel. Next is the lower receiver. A new production Harrington and Richardson M16A1 lower in beautiful gray anodizing with the H&R line complete with the M16A1 roll marks and the auto fire selector marking. Very cool. Next up is the complete Colt M16A1 upper with bolt carrier group and charging handle bought from Simpsons Limited. The upper receiver has no forge coats underneath the windage drum but there are Colt proof marks on the front of the dust cover a C in a box and a VP in a triangle. And from my research, I dated this upper to about 1969 to 1971, primarily due to the barrel she has. More on that coming up. The beautiful Colt M16A1 triangle handguards are complete with no cracks, and the heat shields are marked L for left and R for right. Next is the front sight base that has no markings. It is flash milled front and back and has the A1 front sight post. You can also see the use of a roll pin instead of a rivet for the front sling swivel. The 20 inch 1 in 12 pencil barrel is marked C and PC underneath which stands for Colt Magnetic Particle Chrome Chamber only, which Colt used from 1969 to 1971. And to top it off is the A1 birdcage flash hider with lock washer replacing the three prong. Now let's go flip her on to the other side. Here's another view of the beautiful Colt E-Type A1 stock. Now I do want to point out while shooting prone, the slick butt blade would occasionally slip. But nonetheless, she's still an excellent stock, which is also the right length of pull for me. 
Moving along, here's a closer view of the upper receiver. First is the teardrop forward assist, the rear sight windage drum with the raised lettering, and the charging handle. Also, the bolt carrier inside the upper receiver is marked with a C for cold, and the bolt itself is marked with an MPC. As stated earlier, there are no forge codes underneath the windage drum as you can see and the cold proof marks on the front of the dust cover are a bit faint, but they are there. A C in a box and a VP in a triangle. The lower parts kit and trigger is from a Colt SP-1, all marked with C for Colt. I did however have to replace the SP-1 large front pivot pin with a smaller standard one. And lastly is the Colt A1 pistol grip, which was not included with the SP-1 lower set and purchased separately from AK Options. Overall, I'm very happy how my M16A1 clone turned out. I feel very fortunate to have found all the parts I use, from the complete Colt M16A1 upper, Colt SP1 parts and stock, and H&R M16A1 lower receiver, which really completes my M16A1. Simply beautiful. Now, the question is, does she still shoot as good as she looks? Well, let's find out. Off to the 50 yard range. For my AR 15s, I always zero at 50 yards with a center mass hold. I set the rear aperture to the non L side, then adjusted the front side pose for elevation and rear side jump for windage until my rounds hit center. I then shot these three rounds to confirm my zero. As you can see, all three rounds hit the bullseye perfectly and had no gassing issues with the rifle, even using cheap steel case ammo. Very cool. Now, let's see how she does at 200 yards. With the sights untouched from my 50 yard zero, I proceeded to shoot 10 rounds using a 6 o'clock hole. The target I'm using is the NRA-C 200 yard target, which has a 13 inch black circle. I also put a shoot and see 12 inch circle target from big dog targets so it's easier to see the hits. As you can see, all the rounds grouped well together. Elevation and windage was good, and I'm very happy with the initial results, especially this being my first time out at 200 yards. So, with that data, I could conclude that my M16A1 clone can at least do 2.75 MOA at 200 yards with the ammo that I'm using, Academy Monarch 223 55 grain steel case. 
Shooting 10 rounds gives me an honest measurement of my capability with the ammo that I'm using. I'll measure 8 out of 10 rounds, 80%, allowing 2 for shooter errors and flyers. Now, I know she can do a whole lot better than 2.75 MOA, especially looking at that 7 round group, which measured 3.6 inches, which is 1.8 MOA. And again, that's with cheap steel case ammo. Very cool. Now, it's time for another 6 inch steel circle challenge. Still 10 rounds to knock off 5 6 inch steel circle targets, but this time's at 100 meters and with a little twist. No front support except for use of a sling. A loop sling that is. Now, a 50 yard zero at 100 meters would generally hit high from the point of aim. And instead of doing a 6 o'clock hole like my previous videos, I held center mass and a tad to the right. And I was still able to complete this challenge on my first attempt. Well, let's see how it went. So, it took 6 rounds to complete this challenge. I superimposed all the hits so you can see how the group looks like. About a 3.5 inch group at 100 meters, which is 3.2 MOA. With a center mass hold, you can see the hits were high as expected, and it actually felt easier to hold that center mass. Now, I should have completed this challenge in 5 rounds, but rushed the last target and missed. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Well, just as long as the target falls, then it's counted. Challenge completed. So there you have it. My M16A1 clone. Still able to perform very well with no issues or malfunctions. I was very surprised how well she grew up with cheap steel case ammo. It goes to show Colt's excellent quality from a 50 year old upper. I'm very proud of my M16A1 clone build and fortunate enough to find correct parts to complete her. My tribute to the great Eugene Stoner. Now, I could finally determine which fixed 20 inch carry handle AR is my favorite, and I'll post my results. Stay tuned. Again, as always, thanks for watching.